All right, Yuri and I have a quick video for you today. This is just going over the weather instruments. So once you start with weather, you need to be able to measure all the different variables. And the pretty straightforward ones, right, Yuri? You didn't even have to draw any pictures or anything. So we'll just go through some of the basic ones and uh, make sure you can recognize them and we'll do a few practice questions. Nice quick video just to go over those. So the first one that you see here is a thermometer. Uh, we've been alive for 14, 15, 16 years. You know how those work. Degrees Fahrenheit, degrees Celsius. Converting between the two, you have to do. Uh, and we'll practice that during the ESRT review videos. Otherwise, measuring temperature is like the number one thing for weather forecasting. The second thing that you see here is the sling psychrometer. So um, that's measuring temperature too, but it's also the temperature that um, when water is evaporating, what temperature can that thermometer be? So the more water that can evaporate, the colder that second wet bulb thermometer gets. And that helps us figure out the difference between, if you have a bigger difference between dry bulb and wet bulb, that helps us figure out what's the relative humidity and what's the dew point, which are two things that we'll use later on. But you gotta know psychrometer or sling psychrometer measures relative humidity, dew point, or you can figure those out with them, but basically it measures temperature and wet bulb temperature. Uh, let's come back to this real quick. Yuri thought I didn't do a great job with describing wet bulb and what does that do. So dew point, finding the dew point using the wet bulb and the dry bulb tells us where do the clouds form. That's the temperature that the air can't hold any more water. And why does the wet bulb, Yuri didn't think I did a great job describing why the wet bulb is always colder than the dry bulb. So the drier that the air is, Yuri volunteered to do this. It took a little wet paper towel here. Yuri's going to wear this wet paper towel. Let us know how he feels as I describe this. Can you still see? I mean, I don't want to block your eyes. So he's wearing that wet paper towel. Um, the drier that the air is, the more water can evaporate. The more water that can evaporate, the lower that temperature can go because evaporating water uses something. How do you feel, Yuri? He, did you hear him? He said he feels cold. So the water wasn't cold that I put on here, but when water starts to evaporate, it uses energy. It needs heat energy. So it steals it from the air, from the wet bulb thermometer, and it drives that temperature down. So the bigger the temperature difference between wet bulb and dry bulb, the less likely chance there is to rain. And when the wet bulb gets up to the dry bulb temperature, that's the point, that's the dew point when it will rain. So we'll go over that again later, but Yuri thought that it really needed an explanation there. Thanks, pal. Um, the third one here, one of the most important, they're all really important. One of the most important ones, just see it like this, is that's the barometer. So the barometer shows air pressure, how much air is above us pushing down on us. Warmer air pushes down on us less. Colder air pushes down on us more. Also humid air pushes down on us less and dry air pushes down on us more. We'll go into the details of that um, in the next video. It's all about pressure. But for there, you just need to recognize that barometric pressure, barometer, it measures in millibars and in inches of mercury. Um, and you can see the two things over there the two units. Um, and then wind. Measuring wind is another really important one. You got to remember that wind is named from where it comes from. So a north wind comes from Canada and it's usually a cooler wind and a southerly wind comes from the south and it's usually a warmer wind. So the two ways to measure that, um, the first one's the wind vane that you see here. That's the rooster on top usually or a horse or something is is the normal picture of that and, and it just points to the direction that the wind is coming from. And then the other one is, um, I'm forgetting the name right here, so I'm gonna have to blank this one out. Uh, anemometer. So it's an anemometer, I, one of those days. So um, to measure the wind speed is an anemometer. The faster it spins, the, the greater the wind speed. Um, that could be measured in knots or miles per hour. You see both of those knots is used quite a bit too. So how fast the wind is going and what direction the wind is going. So just knowing the different instruments, you gotta make sure that they're in your brain. Um, they're really straightforward and easy questions to answer on the final exam. Usually you'll see 
one or two. Um, it's rare to see more than that, but they're, they're nice questions to get because all you have to do is kind of memorize those five or six instruments and match up with what they look like and what they measure. So let's go practice some of those questions and it's a nice, quick, easy video. I have no weather jokes right now. I'll pop back in at the end if Yuri comes up with a good one. We're back already. We forgot one. I'm having that kind of morning. A rain gauge measures how much rain has fallen. Pretty straightforward. Precipitation gauge or rain gauge. Uh, you need to know how many inches of rain or snow have fallen. All right, let's just go through some of the weather instruments and make sure we can answer those types of questions. What weather instrument to measure rainfall? So rainfall, you can see they throw four different actual weather instruments in there. Um, they're not picking random words, so they use the actual real words, and you've got to know the difference between them. So precipitation or rain gauge measures how much rain fell. Um, and then barometer was a pressure meter. Anemometer was a wind speed meter. And a wind vane is a wind direction um, measurement tool. When you look at this one here, you can see temperature and then variable B. So you have two different measurements, okay? One is in degrees Fahrenheit and one is in inches. Line B on the graph represents data from which instrument? So what could be measured in inches is one of the clues. And then the other clue is that as the temperature is going up, this other variable is going down. And when the temperature goes down, this other variable is going up. So they're opposites. They're, it's an indirect relationship. That would be um, pressure, air pressure, barometric pressure, barometer. Okay, so we have two other instruments and they have pictures. They don't show any of the units, but you need to recognize them by um, picture and unit and what they measure. So um, this right here is a barometer that measures pressure. And you can see the lower numbers are stormy and the higher numbers are usually clear. High pressure is nice weather. And this one right here with those um, little circles that would be spinning around, that measures how fast the wind is going. So that's an anemometer. So A would be barometer and B would be anemometer. And you can see that both of these choices give you that correctly. So then make sure that the variable is also matching up right and it would be choice D would work out for that. So it was a little tricky there. I could see a lot of people picking C just by first glance. Similar picture, this one does put the units on there, inches you can see, but it's the same thing. The lower numbers are stormy, the higher numbers, higher pressures are clear, nice weather. So that would be um, air pressure, barometric pressure, barometer. And then they just give you a straight up list here and you've got to match which one goes with which. And so take a second to try to do that. I'm just waiting for you to pick which choice you think is the right choice. And it would be choice D. So psychrometer, um, it, it really measures wet bulb and dry bulb and you can determine the relative humidity from it. So it, it's, I guess it's a little bit of a tricky thing, but psychrometer, sling psychrometer goes with humidity, dew point, wet bulb, dry bulb. And this one here, not really crazy about the picture, um, just because it'd be better if they showed like the rooster or the horse that you can usually see on top of a barn. But this is showing the wind direction. It's a wind vane. Um, it, I, I could see why you would think that would be wind speed too. It kind of, sort of, looks like the side view of those little circles that would spin with the wind speed. So I'm just not crazy about the picture, but make sure you can identify the picture the variable, and, and the name of the instrument. And then this last one kind of goes with that same thing, determining which weather variable goes with something. And it's not necessarily the instrument, but knowing that 20, 30, 40, 50, we're not looking at pressures with these numbers, we're looking at temperatures. So temperature would be measured in degrees Fahrenheit. Um, you, you can see different maps um, with the different things that they would measure. Wind speed, this, I mean, those numbers would go with wind speeds, but that's not a wind speed pattern that you'd see. And snowfall inches wouldn't make any sense. 